I got uh, my appendix taken out in medical school and overall great care. <laughs> However, in retrospect, I wish this would have happened in Oakland and you had been doing tap block then because I remember being a, a little more painful than I thought, like that people told me it was going to be. It hurt, it hurt a bit, you know, and like um, going from a, you know, looking at your uh, article here, um, your patients seems like all of them went from like a five or a six all the way down to a two just with that tap block. If you're not good enough at ultrasound, that's not an excuse to punish your patients with radiation. Get out there, ultrasound some hearts, some lungs, some IVCs. Let us know how you feel about it. Yeah, we can definitely do that, or we could be better clinicians and use our ultrasound. Hello, my name is Jacob Avila of Ultrasound Podcast, and I have with me a special guest, Arun Nagdev. Arun is the director of emergency ultrasound in Oakland, California, and he's kind of like the nerve block guy. I mean, he's the guy that we all kind of go to when we have questions about this, and he's on the cutting edge of this emergency ultrasound nerve block whole deal. Arun, how are you doing, man? Good. How are you doing, Jacob? How are you? Uh, all is well. I'm sunny California. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's great. Uh, I'm uh, from a little south of where you're at. I'm from Southern California, like down in uh, Loma Linda. And nice. I remember it being, you know, February and, and like still being in a t-shirt and shorts. And uh, like right now it's like 20 degrees outside mm -hmm. and flurrying where I'm at. So um, I'm jealous. All right. So I love nerve blocks and mostly I like nerve blocks because I don't like my patients being in pain. I know that, you know, narcotics work sometimes, but there's all these issues with narcotics and they don't always work sometimes. There's complications and stuff, right? So that's, that's why I like the nerve blocks. Now I like pretty much all of the nerve blocks, but there's this one block, the tap block or the transversus abdominis plane block that I have done maybe once, maybe twice. It's super easy, but I haven't really found like a super good application for it. And Arun, you uh, recently published a case series on what you use it for. And this is like, just blew my mind. Would you mind talking about it? Yeah. So I've been reading a lot about this block. We initially used this block and published on it for abdominal wall abscesses, uh -huh. but I started doing some more reading on it and just looking through the literature and you realize that it's used a lot for abdominal stuff that we don't even think about and stuff that we do all the time. And the big one that kind of popped in my head was some articles that looked at this for preoperative, preoperative for appendicitis and huh. show really high rates of improved pain and uh, reduction in opioid use. I figured, I mean, if, if they can do that, that before the OR, why can't we do that in the ER? Because it seems like that, that continuum starts when the patient hits the door rather than when the sure. patient goes upstairs. Okay. Um, so uh, literally, I was on a flight reading this article. I came into a shift, and we did, did three in one shift, and that's the case series. And <laughs> it worked really well. I mean, blocks are hard, right? They're, it's yeah. really hard to get great data on blocks because... Mm -hmm. We've all had patients that lose, uh, rigging out with the IV placement, right, and some right. people have a broken humerus, and they're chilling in whatever room they're chilling in. <laughs> yeah, so it's I really have hard seen that. To get really good data on this, but the patients I did it in, they all were really excited. And the one I did just a couple of days ago, we finished the block uh, with one of my senior residents, and the mm -hmm. patient thought we did the appendix case. He thought we literally wow. put a needle in his appendix. So I think there's some efficacy to it. Can I say it's 100%? No, but we started talking to our surgeons and they were very excited about this. They were excited that we thought of the patient as a, as a continuum for them, as in when they hit the door to when they go home, we're all involved in their care. And they're very excited about that. And they've been complete, uh, completely helpful and really want this to progress to everything. Sure. Wow. This is crazy. Other so, injuries. So are you talking like it could be potentially for any abdominal like surgical application i mean is it is it does yeah. it have that much potential i mean i think it does and i think it I, I have to still kind of test it i hate putting out stuff that isn't efficacious mm -hmm. but yeah. i mean this could be used for our coles this could be used for uh bad diver ticks and i think that uh, the way i think of it is i mean find an academic teaching center where i have a surgeon you know who's two minutes away or upstairs it's great to have the ability to take care of this but if i'm transferring somebody out if i'm in an area where there's no surgeon till the morning, a lot of our doctors work at, um, this could really be something that could be a nice mitigant of pain and also could really improve patient care, which is kind of the of goal. Um, and it's not a hard block, like you said. I think this is something that has to be discussed with your consultant before you start hopping and in, hopping in doing these because the last thing you want them to do is come downstairs and say, patient's not in pain. So we try to, we've just put it to the point where once our CT confirmed, 
our surgeons are aware of it and they're happy, they're ready to take them to the OR. We just do it, do the block. A lot of times the junior res will come down and feel the belly, mm -hmm. but commonly they're like, yeah, we totally get it. Go ahead and, and do the block. I would recommend having your surgeon come down and feel the belly um, with the CT confirmed uh, appendicitis and then doing the block. Okay. So that's actually one of, was the first question I was going to ask is just practically speaking, how did you get your surgeons involved and on board with this? So did you talk to them first or you just kind of tried it out? Like how, how exactly, I mean, do we, do we do this if we've never done it before? What would be your advice? Well, so I'm really lucky. I work at a center where our surgeons and our orthopods are completely invested to, to blocks. I mean, we've been doing wow. this for now 10 years where femoral nerve blocks get at the door, get blocked in the, in the trauma bay. Mm -hmm. Um, Humeral fractures get blocked. All of our rib fractures get blocked, and it's completely a part of our protocol. When this, when I thought about this, I just emailed one of our uh, one of our surgeons, one of the kind of surgeons who has the decision making power to allow this. And I, I just talked to her. She's on the paper. I said, Emily, this is going to totally change practice. She was like, Go for it. I totally trust you. Wow. And she's been really excited about this, and uh, actually giving a talk to uh, the whole surgical group in the Bay Area about this in a few weeks just because they feel that this is something that could really help uh, patient care. Wow. Okay. So maybe get your consultants on board, make sure that they're cool. Cause some of them might want to get, you know, the examination first, put it mm -hmm. in. Now what, um, walk me through how to perform the block. Um, I'm assuming a linear probe, right? I mean, this is ultrasound guided procedure. So the linear probe would probably be the right probe, right? Yeah. I think you're going to tell you that there's people that are so big. I need a curve linear probe. I just think it's yeah. make this simple. Don't make it difficult. Don't, sure. don't try to overthink this. The patient is, you know, 650 pounds and you can't even see the peritoneum. It's probably just a good idea not to do this block on the patient and use what's classically done with other uh, intravenous uh, medications. Mm -hmm. But I think that's classically linear probe. <clears throat> and there's a really nice piece out of a uh, Taiwanese group that really looks at the block mm -hmm. and looks at it in different parts. So they call this actually the lateral tap, not really okay. just the block because there are various portions on the abdomen. Mm -hmm. So for this block, you're really getting a T10 to T12 innervation, okay. and you're looking at the at the kind of space between the infracostal margin, which you can palpate, and the iliac crest. Mm -hmm. That space is where you're going to put your linear probe. <clears throat> it's going to be in a transverse position, okay. and it's going to come in plane and get underneath the internal oblique muscle, right above the transverse ab uh, abdominus muscle. So that's a tap block or transverse abdominus plane block. Got it. It is a feel block. So classically you want to inject not just anesthetic, but some normal saline because you like really 50 want 50 mixture. I, that's what I do. I, I, okay. I commonly when I'm walking my residents through this. I'll let them needle and put normal saline. So they know they're in the right spot. Mm -hmm. And then once that normal saline spreads underneath the internal oblique muscle and above the transverse abdominus muscle, mm -hmm. then I'll flip in and put in the, uh, the pivocaine. I use 0.5, so it gets kind of diluted down to 0.25. So I, I use see. a 20, 20 mixture. Um, and there's stuff online that tell you how much, what's the max dose of bupivacaine. I'm not going to get into that, but you can calculate that pretty easily. And I use a nice mixture. And then you're going in planes, so you're visualizing the needle. Mm -hmm. I will tell you the one downside to this block is it's, the needle is fairly steep. So okay. sometimes you will lose a little needle visualization. So I recommend either flattening your needle or kind of tilting your probe down so you have a little more of an angle of the probe. You're putting into the adipose tissue mm -hmm. and doing a little half cc normal saline injections to really delineate your needle tip. Right. So I, that little bit of like hydro dissection that you can do to kind of Correct. help figure out where the tip is. Correct. Like, and I always say if, if you can't see fluid coming out, you don't see that tentacoic fluid coming out. You don't have a good view of your needle tip. You should probably be careful and not gotcha. inject more. Try to find your needle tip and then and then continue on. Gotcha. Now, are there any, like, this seems, I mean, seems so easy. Is there anything that we should be careful for other than, you know, regular complications, like knowing how to treat last and making sure that you're not inside a blood vessel or something like that? Is there any other kind of complications that could potentially happen with this block? I mean, the, the one complication with this block that I think people have to know about is the fact that if you are blasé about it and don't look for your needle tip, you could theoretically puncture the peritoneum. I don't think that, that's what you want to do. I think it's probably bad form. Uh, you could argue that you're going to the OR anyway, so you're going to puncture the peritoneum, but you probably don't want to do that. Right. Like, what if the bowel's right there? I mean, I feel like <laughs> that's not something that you'd want to do is poke a bowel, right? I think, I think you've got to, like anything else, right? Uh, if you're not comfortable doing this, you should wait. Do a bunch of forearm nerve blocks. Do a bunch of femoral nerve blocks. Get comfortable with needle visualization. 
visualize this a few times, do it in somebody that's nice and thin and easy, and then work your way up to more advanced people. So I think you got to use common sense with all procedures in VR. Uh, this is not your first block, even though I think it's a fairly simple block. I, I would recommend doing blocks that are in the general scope of practice for emergency medicine. Mm -hmm. And then expanding this once you've talked to your surgeon, once you feel comfortable with needle visualization, once you're comfortable tilting your probe down and getting a nice view. And I think this is a really nice block. We've done, I, I, I told you, probably about 20 um, nice. since we did this. Uh, residents are... Are excited about learning this. They, whenever I'm on shift or uh, the other ultrasound faculty, they're very excited about doing this block. And we've had good efficacy, just like our serratus blocks. Uh, the tap block is really, I think, going to become something that emergency medicine physicians use in the armamentarium. It sounds like it should be. I mean, it sounds like it's uh, patient, some good patient center outcomes as far as pain goes. Um, and even like, not even the pain, but maybe even like complications of, you know, overloading them with narcotics. So more than just their pain levels will go down. It's that they'll, they'll probably have less complications down the road. I mean, that's, that's what I would think. Yeah. And I mean, there's going to be physicians out there who are going to do the same thing that I remember having this conversation 10 years ago with the femoral nerve block that looked at me like I was crazy and just said, well, we have a great technique. We just give them opioids. And I think now I think it's just becoming much more clear that that's really not just our alternative. Right. If you're comfortable doing opioids and ketamine and mm -hmm. acetaminophen and don't want to do this block, that's great. I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with it for people that want to maintain patients' awareness while they're with their family, mm -hmm. relaxing in their room, waiting to go to the OR. I think it's a fantastic modality that is underutilized. Yeah, no, I got you. I wish um, I got uh, my appendix taken out in medical school and overall great care. <laughs> However, in retrospect, I wish this would have happened in Oakland and you had been doing tap block then because I remember being a, a little more painful than I thought, like that people told me it was going to be. It hurt, it hurt a bit, you know, and like um, going from a, you know, looking at your uh, article here, um, your patients, seems like all of them went from like a five or a six all the way down to a two just with that tap block. Yeah, it's usually about a half reduction. That's why I kind of sell even with my hip blocks or other mm -hmm. blocks. It's usually about a half. Sometimes you get great anesthesia. Yeah. And you'll get the patient that says, oh, did you take my call? My call? Like, oh, well, my <laughs> out. That is, you can't expect that. And you shouldn't right. expect it because you will, uh, the error is um, what I do with blocks is I block people. And then 10 seconds later, I'm like, you feel better? And they're yeah. like, no, go away. You have to kind of go away, come back in 15 minutes. Yeah. And I think generally you're going to get about a half, but whatever their pain is, about a half. That's, uh, that's good advice. I like that. Because yeah. that puts uh, expectations in the right spot. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's more my expectations than the patient sometimes. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Great block. I'm, I'm going to, I'm really going to, you know, when I get back to work, I'm going to talk to these, my surgeons and figure out that's something that is feasible. And I feel like, especially in that patient that you're having trouble with the narcotics, this would be a huge benefit. So I'm definitely going to try it next time that I'm on shift. And I, thanks for publishing this and talk, talk to us about it. Great. Thanks, Jacob.